it's very rare that I get a chance to talk to a kid about religion without it being really creepy. And without divulging too much information, I'm just going to ask you to trust me that I was in one of life's rare circumstances where it's entirely appropriate to talk about atheism with somebody else's religious kid. And it was fascinating. You know, he's curious. He's, he's trying to reconcile all the conflicting shit he's heard from a parent on either side of the theological divide. And while all the logical stuff that he's hearing from the atheist side resonates with his rational brain, he's not willing to risk burning in hell over a few irrefutable rhetorical arguments just yet. He's making what seems like a rational decision, but it only seems that way because the imaginary stakes for being wrong have been raised so high. Of course, there's nothing new there. Right? That's probably why most Christians believe to some extent. But what made the conversation so fascinating is that at 14 years old, he hadn't learned to lie about why he believes yet. If, if he's still a Christian in 10 years and I ask him, why do you believe in God? He's going to give me some kind of convoluted you know, God of the gaps meets first mover meets argument from suspension of all the rules of argument nonsense. But at 14, he's brutally honest. I say, why do you believe in God? He says, because God's going to burn me in hell if I don't. You know, eventually they'll abandon all these reasons and just stick to rationalizations instead. And if you don't believe me, by the way, just listen to any episode of any atheist call-in show ever recorded anywhere. It's the most frustrating thing about listening to something like the atheist experience. You know, they'll ask the people, why do you believe? And then the people will offer up these bullshit apologetics that have nothing whatsoever to do with why they believe. I mean, obviously they don't, because when the hosts read those apologetics, the caller doesn't stop believing. They just move on to the next thing. You know, but the last thing a grown adult Christian wants to admit to an atheist is the real reason why they believe. And why not? Because they talked to some atheist when they were 14 and they realized that none of their reasons stand up to scrutiny. If you ever manage to drill down to it, it's always some combination of fear, anecdotal experience, and cognitive dissonance. You know, the kind of shit that just doesn't sound convincing if you say it out loud. That's why they love to couch mundane shit like, you know, I was bummed one day and a guy bought me a coffee for no reason with a grandiose title like, God has intervened in my life. You know, because if they just said, I believe in God because a dude bought me coffee, they couldn't even take themselves seriously. But if you dig deep enough, it's always going to be something that lame. You know, they'll tell you about an experience with the divine, but then when you demand specifics, it turns out that they're describing the exact same feeling you get when you see the latest Pluto pics from New Horizons or look at a galaxy through a telescope or realize that massage actually is going to turn into a hand job. I mean, how many times has somebody told you about hearing God speak to them, and then when you ask for details, turns out their God sounds an awful lot like the voice that tells you to skip the extra jalapenos this time. And then when you point out that this experience they're using to justify a logically incoherent position is one that you've had and you can explain away without invoking space carpenters, they'll start subtracting adjectives. You know, they'll start getting less and less specific until they've created some phenomenon that completely defies description, but definitely means there's a God. And what's more, they'll assert that if you'd had the same experience, you would come to the same conclusion. Now, isn't that just stupidity's favorite stronghold, right? I know what I experienced. Oh, I know what I saw. Oh, so you're the one that's immune to optical illusions, hallucinations, tricks of the light, and errors of judgment, huh? That's you? I know what I heard. Oh, you're already familiar with all the noises all the animals make and all the noises that nature makes and all the audio distortions and echoes your brain can create, huh? And you ruled those all out? I know what I felt. Really? Really, despite the fact that you said you couldn't even describe what you felt, but you definitely know what it is? But no matter how unimpressive these excuses are, they would always rather throw those out than the truth, because the truth is always fear. You know, most Christians, you know, the literal fear of hell isn't going to stick for too long. Most kids grow out of that if they're not, like, drowning in religion every day of their lives. It's just, it's a concept that's too flimsy to hold up to the scrutiny of a fully mature brain. But if the indoctrination has done its job, that won't matter. Because at a certain point, the fear of hell is replaced by a new fear that's a little less frightening, but a lot more tangible. It's a fear of all the time that you've wasted. God has to exist, or you've spent your life dedicated to an imaginary being, trying to win the favor of someone who's not even there. You missed out on all the joyous fornications of your youth and pissed away a finite lifetime satisfying your curiosity with bullshit instead of knowledge. You know, look, your life is all the eternity you get, and ultimately you're going to be tormented by every minute of it you waste. So even though the church is lying about the answer, they're right about the stakes. If you get the God question wrong, you can spend eternity in hell.